Hello again folks, uh, so welcome to this video still on hypothesis testing for the proportion of a binomial distribution but this time we're going to focus on what we call two-tailed tests uh, and you'll see why they're called two-tailed tests uh, later in the video. Okay, so the example we're going to look at this time is about uh, one of the nation's uh, favourite television programmes, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. So it's known to be enjoyed by 45% of the UK population. Uh, because of that, RuPaul decided to make a series in the UK. Uh, you might remember it. Uh, it says the BBC wants to know whether it was equally as pop popular as the US series. Um, notice that they're not asking whether it's more popular or less popular. They're just wondering whether it was equ equally popular. So they're kind of just wanting to know whether it's changed or not, whether the popularity has changed. So they asked 12 people whether they enjoyed the UK show and two people said that they did. Uh, we want to perform a hypothesis test at the 5% level to see whether the level of enjoyment has changed. Again, not increased necessarily or decreased, just changed. So how would we go about this? Well, very similar to previous examples for a start, uh, we write down our random variable. So our random, uh, sorry, uh, before we do that, I think, let's think about uh, what this would look like on the graph that we've seen before, or similar to that that we've seen before. So we've got the possible number of people who said they did enjoy it along the bottom. Um, we know that it was 45% so before uh, so we would expect 45 percent of the 12 people so it's somewhere around five people all right that's the most likely uh, you can see that by the time we get to this end fairly low probabilities and the same there but the important thing is that if there's really few numbers of people that enjoy it then we can say it's likely to have changed from five but also if there's really high numbers we could also say it's changed from five. It is a two-tailed test. We've got one tail at this end that would be a critical region and one tail at that end. So we would have two critical regions. One where the probability that x, or sorry, one where x is less than or equal to some value of x and another where uh, we have x is greater than or equal to some value of x. And our test uh, significance level is 5%, but our 5% now has got to be spread across the two tails. So we would want the probability of X being in our critical region to be less than 2.5% in each tail. All right, And that's an important thing you have to remember to do, is to split the significance level in half for these what we call two-tailed tests. Okay, so how would we write out our working? Um, we've, uh, we write down our random variable, uh, then we go for our hypotheses. Uh, our null hypothesis is that P is equal to 0 0.45, nothing was changed. The alternative for this one is just that it's changed. We don't know whether it's increased or decreased, we can just say that the alternative is it's no longer equal to 0.45. Assuming that the null hypothesis is changed, sorry, yeah, that is true, we would write down our distribution of x here. Okay, back to the graph, and um, we're going to look now at the two different methods that you can use for this. First one I'm going to talk about is the critical region method. So critical region, we know we want some value of x where the probability that x is less than or equal to that value being less than 2.5%. All right, so use your calculator, use the list function, and you should find that less than or equal to 1 is just below, uh, less than or equal to 2 is just above. All right, uh, so worth pointing out that one of them is below 2.5%, the other one's above. Uh, so our critical region there, sorry, let's just go back, the one below 2.5%, one critical region would be x is less than or equal to 1. Same at this end, we want greater than or equal to some value to be less than 2.5%. So find 
two values that are either side of, in this case it would be 0.975, and they will then give you two values uh, either side of 0 0.025. We want the one that is less than 0 0.025, so it's this one. So our critical region at this end is going to be x is greater than or equal to 10. All right, so we've now got our two critical regions. We can say that the uh, critical regions are x is less than or equal to 1 or x is greater than or equal to 10. OK, so how would this look when we write it out in our working? We've written the first three steps. We then show our working to find the lower tail and our working to find the upper tail and we write down what our critical region is. So our critical region is x is less than or equal to 1 or x is greater than or equal to 10. Next step, if you remember, is to look at the test statistic. Well, in this question, two people said that they did enjoy the show. So two is not in the critical region. It's neither less than or equal to one or greater than or equal to 10. It's not in the critical region. There is no evidence to reject H naught. In the context of the question, we can say there is no evidence that Drag Race UK was not equally popular as the US series. Uh, so that's the first method. Uh, just want to run through the steps there again. So remember, write down the variables, write down the two hypotheses, write down the distribution, assuming that the null hypothesis is correct, find the critical regions it's going to be quite a big job with uh, two-tailed tests. Uh, look at your test statistic and make a decision on the null hypothesis and then write that as a conclusion in the context of the question. But let's now just go to the other method uh, for uh, hypothesis tests, which is the p-value method. So for the p-value method, we need to find the probability of getting the test statistic or more extreme. So we first of all need to think about how many people we would expect to enjoy the show. Um, so if it was still 45%, then 12 times 0 0.445, 5.4. We'd expect 5.4 people to enjoy the show. Obviously that's impossible, but it gives us a rough idea. So two is clearly less than that so if we want to find the probability of getting two or more extreme we would want the probability of getting less than or equal to two so we want the probability that x is less than or equal to two and just like before we have to compare that to our significance level but remembering that this 5% significance level is now split with 2.5% at this end, 2.5% at this end. So we have to compare it to 2.5%. So we can say probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is 0 0.0421. Just work that out on your calculator. That is clearly greater than our half of our significance level is greater than 0 0.025 and hence there is no evidence to reject H0. In the context of the question uh, that means no evidence that the, the level of enjoyment has changed. So what does it look like? First three steps are the same. Next bit, work out your p-value, compare it to half the significance level. Write down your decision on H0 and then write that uh, conclusion in the context of the question so there is insufficient evidence that the show is not equally as popular as the US series. Uh, running through the steps again, variable, write it down, write down the hypothesis, write down the assumption, work out your p-value, the probability of getting your test statistic or more extreme, Say what your decision is on, the, on whether or not to reject the null hypothesis and then write that as a conclusion in context. 
And that's it for this video. Thank you.